Hi, hello, and welcome back to Program Analysis. This is part three of the lecture on analyzing concurrent programs. And what we want to do in this third part is to look at a technique for testing thread safe classes. Again, as for the other parts of this lecture, um, this part is also based on a paper. And if you're interested in more details about this technique, then please have a look at it there. So let's get started by defining what thread safety actually is. It's a term that is sometimes used in a very informal way, but usually what it means is that it's a way to encapsulate um, the challenges of concurrent programming into a specific class in a language that um, has classes. And these classes then are called thread safe classes. So the basic idea is that instead of using concurrency everywhere and bothering about having the right locks and synchronizing memory accesses correctly everywhere in your program, you delegate this task to a few classes that hopefully do that correctly. And then in the rest of the program, um, you can basically um, assume that this class is ensuring the correct synchronization of all shared memory accesses so that the clients of this class can basically use instances of this class as if they were alone and no other threads would access these instances. So in a sense, the rest of the program can treat um, a thread safe class as a black box and just call its methods without really thinking about the other threads that may also use um, objects of this class at the same time. A popular book on concurrency in Java gives this definition of what a thread safe class is. So it basically says that the methods of this class behave correctly when accessed from multiple threads with no additional synchronization in the calling code. So the important bit here is that um, there's no need for clients of this class to acquire any logs, but this is already done in the class. What is not quite clear in this definition is what it really means to behave correctly, but fortunately um, there's a different definition that says that the operations um, of this thread safe class behave as if they occur in some serial order that is consistent with the order of the method calls made by each of the individual threads. So essentially the correct behavior is implicitly given by what could happen if you would execute the calls that happen concurrently in some serial order. And we will use this um, definition of thread safety as a way to find bugs in thread safe classes. Let's first illustrate this idea of thread safety with one particular class from the Java standard library that is supposed to be thread safe, namely the string buffer class. And what we do here in this example is to just initialize a string buffer and then there are two threads that are concurrently using the same instance of the string buffer. And one of these threads is appending A and B while the other one is appending C. And now the question um, for you is, well, what would be um, possible contents of the string buffer B, assuming that string buffer is indeed a thread safe class. So I invite you to just stop the video here for a few seconds and think about it. And then I'll tell you um, what content of B could actually happen. So let's have a look at the solution. So there are three possible contents um, that B may have that um, are legal if this class is thread safe. One of them is ABC, which you basically get if thread one is executing its first two calls to append first and then thread two follows. We could also have CAB, which is what you get if thread two starts executing its call and then thread one is executing the other two calls. Or you could also legally get ACB if the call of thread two is basically interleaved in between the two calls of thread one. But any other state of the string buffer, um, for example, AC, where maybe the C, uh, sorry, the B is overwritten by the C, um, are not legal. Or BAC is also not okay because this would mean we have reordered the two calls in thread one, which um, is not okay with the definition of thread safety. Now, because programs that use thread safe classes put so much confidence into these thread safe classes, the correctness of these programs heavily relies on the correctness of the thread safe classes. So now what actually happens if these classes are not thread safe? Well, then you have a problem. So you better test for um, these classes to be actually thread safe. And one way to do this is the tool that we are talking about now here. Uh, it's called ContiG, which basically means concurrent test generator. And in a nutshell, what it does is to automatically generate multi-threaded unit tests, which basically look like normal unit tests, just that they have multiple threads. And by doing this, it detects thread safety violations or thread safety related bugs um, by comparing the concurrent behavior of these 
um, multi-threaded unit tests to linearizations of this concurrent behavior. So basically to um, alternative tests where you would put all the methods that happen concurrently into a single thread. Before looking into how exactly this works, let's just have a look at one example bug that this approach has found. And this was a bug in a JDK, which is in the string buffer class that we have already seen earlier. So if string buffer is used um, as shown here in this example, then something unexpected happens. So in this example, the string buffer is initialized and then some string, say ABC, is appended to it. And then the same string buffer object B is used in two different concurrently executing threads where the first thread is trying to insert the content of the string buffer into itself at index one. So it basically tries to put ABC right after um, the A that is already there so that at the end you would have A, ABC, BC. And concurrently thread two is trying to delete a particular character that is already in the string buffer, namely the character at uh, index one. And now if you write code like this and you execute it concurrently, you may actually um, get an index out of bounds exception, which is of course not what you would accept, uh, expect, because um, if you would just execute one of these calls after another, this kind of exception could never occur. And this um, has actually been a bug um, in the JDK, which has also been confirmed by the uh, Java developers. To detect this kind of bug, Contigy is automatically generating test cases that test the thread safety of a given class. So the input to the approach is this class under test, and then the output is either nothing or a report about a bug that it has found. So to do this, um, there are three main steps. The first one is to um, generate a concurrent test, and um, we've already seen examples of these tests and we'll see in a second how they are generated. Then the next step is to execute this test. And finally, um, there's a thread safety oracle, which we'll also see in a second, that looks at the execution of this test case and determines whether there was um, a thread safety violation or not. If there was one, it's going to be reported as a bug. And if not, then um, the approach goes back to one of the two earlier stages. So either it goes back to um, execution, which basically means it's just executing the same test again, hoping that in a different execution, it's gonna hit different behavior that maybe exposes a bug. Or it takes this arrow back here and um, goes back to generating another test, hoping that maybe another test is gonna expose a threat safety bug. So let's start by looking at how the generation of these concurrent tests um, works. So the example that you've seen before is actually a generated test um, that has been generated by this algorithm. And each of these tests consists of three parts. One is what is called the sequential prefix. So it's essentially a sequence of statements that creates and then sets up an instance of the class under test, for example, by just calling the constructor and then calling one or more methods on it. And then we have two parallel, uh, parallelly executing threads that each um, execute a so-called concurrent suffix. So the key idea here is that these concurrent suffixes are using the shared instance of the class under test and each are calling methods on this um, shared instance. To generate such a test, um, the test generation algorithm takes three steps. The first one is to um, generate this prefix. So essentially here it um, instantiates the class under test and calls some methods on it. And once it has done this, it moves on to step number two, where it's creating multiple suffixes for this prefix, which basically adds calls on this shared instance um, of the class under test. And then once the algorithm has produced a prefix and at least two suffixes, six suffixes, it puts them together into a test, which basically looks like what you've seen before. So where you have the prefix first, followed by the two concurrently executing uh, tests. And all of this generation of the method calls and uh, as a result also of the prefixes and suffixes uh, happens through so-called feedback directed uh, random test generation, which um, we'll see in more detail in a second. Let's look into this algorithm in some more detail and let's start with the first step, which is to create this prefix um, for our test. So in the prefix, we start by instantiating the class under test. So we wanna um, call one of its uh, constructors and this happens by basically randomly selecting one of the available constructors. So let's say our class under test is string buffer and let's say we are randomly selecting this constructor that just um, 
calls the default constructor without passing any arguments, then we would basically have this, um, this call here. Now, whenever the test generation algorithm is adding um, a call or, or a constructor call to the test, it's executing this entire test that it has at this point in order to check whether this call or constructor call um, yields an exception. And only if it does not yield an exception, it's continuing. So this is an, an idea that is similar to what you've seen earlier in the lecture when we talked about Rendoop and its feedback directed random test generation. Now here for this simple example, if we just execute this test that we have so far, um, we will see that it runs fine without any exception, so we can continue extending this prefix. Now to extend this prefix, the algorithm wants to call some methods on this newly created instance of the class under test, so it will randomly select some method. Let's say it randomly selects to call the append method, which requires a string argument. And now in order to get an argument, um, it goes through a couple of different options. So one option is to um, take one of the already available objects um, that we have. So if we had a string object in this test, we could just use that. The second option is to call another method which is returning an object or a value of the required type. And the third option is to just pick a random value. So for the sake of the example, let's assume the algorithm is picking a random value, let's say ABC, and then it has extended this test with a new call. So it will again execute this extended test to check whether this leads to an exception, because if it does, then we should not um, use this prefix. But here everything is fine. So we are basically done um, creating a prefix. Of course, we could also add more methods, but for the example, let's just assume that one is enough. And this is the prefix that we get. So let's now look into the second step, which is creating suffixes for the already created prefix. And what we essentially want to do here is after the object um, has been set up in the prefix, we want to call some more methods on this shared instance of the class under test. So we start with the prefix that we have already created. And then in order to call more methods on it, we again randomly select one of the methods that this object is providing. So let's say we are selecting insert and insert has multiple variants. So let's say we take the one that takes an integer argument as the first argument and then um, a character sequence which tells us what to insert at a given index. So that means again the algorithm needs to decide what arguments to use here for the integer and for the character sequence. And again it has these three options of taking any available object that has a compatible type or calling a method that um, returns a value of the required type or just picking a random value. So let's say it takes a mix here of uh, option A and C by taking a random value minus 5 for the int and the existing variable B which is compatible with the character sequence type that we need because string buffer is also um, a character sequence. So now this is the um, call we have added now and now the algorithm is trying out again if this leads to an exception or not. So it will execute both the prefix and this so far created suffix. And if it does that, it'll actually get an exception. And the reason simply is that we cannot insert anything at index minus five. So we get an index out of bounds exception here. So now this is just a, a sequential problem. It doesn't have anything to do with concurrency or thread safety. So the, the algorithm does not want to have this kind of suffix, but instead goes back to the previous step where it's trying to find better arguments for this call that do not lead to an exception. And now let's say it now randomly chooses one and B as the arguments. So we again execute this entire um, prefix plus partial suffix. And now in this case, we do not get an exception, which means we have created um, a suffix that is fine. So now we could of course add more uh, method calls to this suffix, but for the sake of the example, let's assume we are done and then move on to the second suffix that we also want to have and that we also create um, in a similar way to before. So let's now assume we add this call in the second suffix um, that calls delete character add with index one. If we execute just the prefix and the second suffix one after the other, um, we will see that there's no exception. So everything is fine, which means we basically have created another suffix that um, the algorithm can continue to work with.
So now at this point the algorithm has a prefix and two suffixes, so it'll put these together into a complete test, um, which basically just works by spawning um, a new thread for each of the suffixes after the prefix has been executed. And this gives us um, exactly the test that we've seen earlier, which if you execute it and are lucky to trigger the right interleaving, will expose um, a thread safety bug. All right, so zooming out a little bit, um, here's the overview of the approach again. You now have seen how to generate uh, concurrent tests. Now these tests are executed. We will not look into detail of how this um, works. Um, in practice, Contigy is just repeatedly executing the test um, on the standard uh, Java virtual machine, but you could use more sophisticated techniques such as the one that we'll see in the fourth lecture of this, or the fourth video of this lecture. So now, instead of looking more into the execution, let's now have a look into the threat safety oracle, which is trying to find out whether a given execution of this generated concurrent test is exposing a threat safety bug or not. Okay, so let's have a look at this threat safety oracle and let's see how it figures out whether a given test execution is actually exposing a threat safety violation or not. So there are two key ideas here. One is that the oracle is focusing on very clear signs of misbehavior, namely exceptions and deadlocks. When any of these two happens and the programmer does not expect it, it's, it's obviously bad. And the second idea is related to the definition of threat safety itself. And this idea is to con compare the concurrent execution of the given test case to linearizations of this test case um, to basically check if the misbehavior, the exception or the deadlock that we are seeing in a concurrent execution could also happen in a linearization of this test. So what does linearization mean? Linearization essentially means we are putting all calls that happen in the concurrent test into just a single thread while preserving the order of the calls within that thread. So let's say we have a test case that um, looks like this, where we have some prefix um, up here, followed by two um, concurrently executing suffixes. One executes some statements one and two, and the other one executes a statement three. Then we would have three possible linearizations of this test case, namely the ones that you see here. So they always have the suffix at the beginning, followed by all the calls in the prefix, but preserving the order of calls within the individual threads, which basically means we are never swapping the order of one and two, but we may put three in between or before or after these two calls one and two. So now given this idea of linearizations, let's have a look at how the Oracle figures out whether an execution of a concurrent thread exposes a thread safety problem. So it starts by executing um, the test concurrently and in this one concurrent execution of the test, it checks whether there is an exception or a deadlock. If there is no such um, misbehavior, then we're basically done with this one execution. It has not exposed any threat safety problem and there will be no further analysis of this execution. In contrast, if the uh, Oracle sees an exception or a deadlock, the question is whether this could also happen in one of the linearizations of the test. So in this case, it's trying out um, an, a linearization of this test case and checks if the same failure also happens. If the same failure also happens, it basically means that, well, okay, it's an exception or a deadlock, but it could also happen if you just call this um, these two uh, or more concurrent methods in a single thread, which means it's not a thread safety problem. It's not even a concurrency related problem. So there's no need to uh, report anything to the user. But if the same failure does not happen in this linearization, and if it also does not happen in any other linearizations, so basically the algorithm has checked all possible linearizations of the concurrent test and hasn't seen the same exception or deadlock, then and only then a threat safety violation is reported because then we know for sure that there actually is a threat safety bug in um, our class under test. So let's illustrate this um, idea of the Oracle again with our running example. So here's the um, generated test that tests the string buffer class of the JDK. And as I've said earlier, if you execute this test concurrently and you're lucky enough to hit the right interleaving, you will actually get an exception. So now the Oracle is checking whether this exception can also happen in one of the linearizations. In this case, there are only two linearizations. One where we take the call from thread one first, followed by the call from thread two. And if you do this, you will not get an exception. 
and the other one where we just swap the order of the two calls from the two threads. So after the prefix, execute thread thread two's call and then threads one, uh, thread one's call. And in this case, we also do not get an exception. And this means that the exception is actually a thread safety violation. And this is um, going to be reported by the Oracle. Good, so now that you've seen um, how this Oracle works, let's take a step back and think about what properties um, this Oracle is actually giving us. Um, so it turns out this Oracle is sound but incomplete, um, which here means that all reported threat safety violations are real. So there are no false positives, but whenever the approach says that there is a threat safety problem, then indeed um, there is one. But on the downside, the um, Oracle cannot guarantee to um, 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 yeah, that the class that is tested is indeed thread safe because it may not um, see some more subtle misbehavior that, for example, does not result in an exception or a deadlock. What is uh, nice about this Oracle is that it's independent of the bug type. So in contrast to, for example, the eraser approach that we've seen in the previous part of this lecture, it is not just looking at data races, but it can also detect other kinds of concurrency bugs, including data races, but also atomicity violations or deadlocks, for example. And as long as any of these bugs manifests through an exception or a deadlock, um, the Oracle will be able to, to find it. Finally, let me just quickly tell you about um, some results um, that this test generator has obtained. So it is implemented for Java classes and then um, was applied to popular thread safe classes from the JDK itself, but also from various Apache libraries. And in total, it could find 15 uh, concurrency bugs that were not previously known in these um, uh, classes, including some previously unknown problems in the JDK itself, which is a nice finding because that's a piece of software that is used by many, many people. Um, in the version of the tool that I've talked about here, it has um, taken between several seconds and several hours, in the worst case, 19 hours to find a bug. So it was actually pretty compute intensive. And one of the reasons is that um, this random generation of tests doesn't really look at what kind of concurrent behavior has already been seen. And in a follow-up piece of work that um, yeah, a master student in my group has actually worked on, um, we could reduce this worst case time to several minutes. So the, the overall approach um, has become much more efficient. Um, and the key idea here was to look at the coverage of the um, uh, that the test cases achieve and to try to cover new behavior more often so that we do not repeatedly test the same kind of behavior. All right, and this is the end of video number three in this lecture on analyzing concurrent programs. You hopefully now have a better idea of what threat safety means and also have seen how to automatically test whether a class is indeed threat safe by generating um, tests at random and then comparing their concurrent behavior to linearizations of the concurrent test. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.